Is it all? Mm -hmm. I've never seen a dead swan before lying like that. Yeah. That's a photograph. It says it's it's it. Yeah. I'm standing on a boat in the middle of Loch Ness. All around me is this blue-green algae. It's on the surface of the water. It's further down into the water. When the boat stops, as we are now, you can see a little bit of it. But when the boat moves, you see in the wake just how much of this stuff there is in the water. It's like a, like a putrid green soup. This is the water that about 40% of the population of Northern Ireland drinks. This is something that has been happening for years, actually for decades, these problems have been building up. Now, they're at a scale that is unmistakably visible. Even thinking about drinking this water is almost enough to make you sick. This is the point where Northern Ireland Water take water out of Loch Ness, they process it, it comes out of our taps, and this is what about 40% of people in Northern Ireland are drinking every day. Well, um, I've actually been working on the lock and up and down this canal and I actually just live over, not that far from here where we are, we're just at the top of the uh, canal, the tomb canal, and I've never ever seen the lock on the canal this bad. And we're actually looking at really the amount of blue-green algae, which is a really dangerous algae. I have never seen that before in, in, in its quantities uh, and we're seeing uh, unfortunately, uh, a dead swan here, which has clearly died of the poisoning from the, the blue-green algae. Really, really, really bad. I can't express how bad the, the condition of the lock and the canal is. Loch Ney is just round the corner there, and the water from Loch Ney can't get past this point, so it backs up here. It's quite stagnant. And what you can see on the surface is a thick layer of algae. You can also see, if you look carefully, not just pools of the blue algae, but along the walls and also on the roots of the trees here where the water has gone up and then it has receded, almost like paint, the blue has stained the walls and the roots of the trees. As we came up towards here from the open lock, we passed a particularly significant area of blue-green algae. A dead swan was lying in one of those pools and the stench here is unbelievable. It's like, it's like the smell of a, of a very unclean toilet. It's filthy, it's horrible. And this is the lock from which we draw our drinking water. We're surrounded by green algae uh, on the surface of the lock. Well, it's such a physical manifestation of uh, problems that the lock has. Um, it really goes back a long time. It goes back nearly 30 years in terms of the amount of nutrients being put into the lock. We're seeing the effects of climate change now in the lock. We're seeing the effects of invasive species in the lock. But the one big thing that hasn't happened, going right back to the Good Friday Agreement, is that the main departments within Northern Ireland have never ever got together to address the issues of the management and the navigation of Loch Ness. That's a big problem and we're seeing it now coming, coming home to fruit. The cost of extracting the water by NI is that there, zero. They don't pay anything for the extraction of the water and the amount of money they put back into uh, in terms of environmental protection, in terms of the birds, the species, and the habitats on Loch Ness, again, is zero. So money's taken out, uh, but very little is put back in, uh, in terms of uh, the protecting of this very important ecosystem and uh, the habitats and species of the loch.
Here, left in Europe, we bet. This is Cranfield Point on the northeastern shore of Loch Ness, and here the blue green algae is so thick that it's almost solid. As you'll see when I throw this rock in, just watch. You can see here putting a stick in just how gloopy, how incredibly deep and thick the algae is here. There basically is no water here. This is now pure algae.